Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757 230 How are you? Good to see you. If you're joining us online, welcome. We're in a series that were just started a few weeks ago. We started on Easter on building bridges, building bridges, relational bridges, thus the bridge behind us. Uh, it's just a, a reminder during this series that we are intentionally doing things to reach and to build bridges with people. So we invite you to come along and be part of that. The, the subject we're going to talk about today will be the potentially the biggest thing that keeps you from, uh, thank you, that keeps you, so we're going to go to a different mic here, okay, will be the, potentially is the biggest thing to keep you from God's purpose for your life, something that it could cause you to miss God's purpose for your life, certainly, and so we, uh, we need to work against that, and what we're talking about today is envy, and here you'll see at the top of your outline, uh, it, it speaks to it right here says, if we are living now by the Spirit's power, let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Then we won't need to look for honors and popularity, which leads to envy and hard feelings. So he's saying, hey, this is, the problem is the minute you get your eyes off of, uh, off of what God's doing in your life, you start looking at other people's lives. He says, it's going to cause hard feelings. You're looking for accolades. You're looking for uh, people to give you recognition. You're comparing all kinds of things that falls into chaos and it'll cause you or potentially cause you to miss what God has for your life. So uh, what is envy? Well, envy is two things. It's resenting God's goodness in other people's lives. And on top of that, it is um, ignoring God's goodness in your own life. So when God blesses other people, you're upset about that. Hey, why did they get that promotion? Hey, why did they get that raise? Well, why, you know, here they're, they're going on a, a, a trip to Europe and I have to pay for my kids' braces. You know, it's just like, you know, you're resenting that. But then also you, rec you don't even recognize what God's doing in your own life. So jealousy is just... Is just one side of that resentment. I mean, envy is like both of those. It's, it's like, uh, not only do I want my grass to be greener than my neighbor's, but I want theirs to turn brown. You know, it's just like, like a double whammy. I, I want both of those to happen. And all that does is cause problems in your life. It, it causes you uh, to, to get focused on the wrong thing, certainly. And uh, that's not what we want. So what we're going to do is talk about that. What I'd like to do, because I really think that this is a spiritual stronghold. Sometimes we're not, we're not even aware of it. Most of us, we don't even see ourselves struggling with envy. Because we're, we kind of, that's a blind spot in our lives. So let's just take a moment. We'll pray. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you, Lord, that you care enough about us to even come and do surgical procedures to like, hey, that doesn't belong. That hurts. That's not helping you. And so, Lord, today we want to uh, just give you permission to do that. If you see something that's hurting us, help us to see that and help us to be willing to let that go and to go in your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so following on your outline, we're going to look at what envy does to our lives when it's unaddressed when we let it kind of run, wreak havoc. First thing is it just causes us to miss life's, our life's purpose. It really does. We, God has a, a destiny for you. He has a plan. He's unfolding that. How can he do that if you're all focused on somebody else? You're only looking at somebody else and what they're doing. So that causes, uh, that causes a lot of problems. So the verse here, notice, it says, anyone who lets himself be distracted from the work I planned for him is not fit for the kingdom of God. So Jesus says, uh, this is actually pretty serious. You know, this is something, sometimes we just kind of, well, you know, envy. You know, The Bible actually links it as one of the six deadly sins, seven deadly sins. But, you know, it's, it's, it, it, if it causes you to miss what God has for you, 
It is the deadly sin. I mean, it does, who cares if there's, a, if there's six others? That's the one that you don't want in your life. And then next is, is it causes conflict. Envy causes conflict in our relationships. Notice it says here, what causes conflicts? Uh, what, excuse me, what causes fights and quarrels among you, which is conflict? Don't they come from your desires that battle from within you? He says a lot of times the conflicts we have in our relationships starts from within. It's in our own heart. It's, in, it's what's going on rattling around in us. Certainly envy fits that category. It's something that's inside of us, and we, uh, we, we, uh, we let it get the best of us. Some of the conflict comes because we, we kind of like play this game called, remember as a kid, you ever play King of the Hill? King of the hill, right? Who can stay? You find a hill, somebody gets on top. Good luck pushing me off, and you play that, you know. Well, adults play it. They're just more subtle about it, right? They're just driving. Who drives the best car? Who lives in the best house? Who has, you know, what color of credit card do you have? Oh, you only have the green one. I have a gold one. And then somebody whips out, I have a platinum one. You only have a gold one. I'm waiting for, like, the kryptonite one that comes out that glows in the dark, you know. Zzz. Look at this. I can get in so much more debt than you. I'm awesome, you know. <laughs> but it causes conflict because we, you know, we, we, we try to outdo people. We try to do better than them. And that happens all the time in, in, in marriages, too. People, you know, they, they, they compete with one another. causes friction, causes fights. And, it's, and it comes from this idea of, hey, I want people to envy me. I want, I want, I'm envying others, and so therefore I want people to envy me. That was, uh, people choose colleges based on that, right? They can't necessarily get into a college, but they'll do whatever they can, maybe even get in because they want the prestigious college that's been in the news recently, right, with those uh, people that had resources to, to throw around, to bribe and pay people, and, and their kids got into colleges they didn't deserve, they didn't work for. In fact, in, in a lot of the cases, kids didn't even know, you know, that what was going on. And so it wasn't the kids, it was the parents. Why? Because they wanted other parents to envy them. Look at what my kid got, how they got into this special school, this Ivy League school. I don't know if you know, but about a week after that broke the news that Dr. Dre, he posted on his Instagram about his daughter getting in to the University of Southern California, and she did it all on her own. Then somebody pointed out, yeah, but you did donate $70 million to that university. <laughs> he deleted his post after that. <laughs> well, he, well, envy, right? Look at, look at, hey, look at what I got. Look at all the things that are going on in my life. I want you to envy me. It causes conflict. It, it kindles resentment. You let that thing go on, it just starts to cause resentment. I like this verse, our lives were full of resentment and envy. We hated others and they hated us. And we can literally resent people. They have all that wealth and we just, oh, they're just filthy rich. Well, maybe they work for it. But no, in our mind, they're filthy rich and, and I, they don't deserve that. They don't deserve that good marriage. They don't deserve that good promotion. They, we can even resent people's spirituality. You know, why do they have a husband that's, you know, loves God more than my husband. And we just get caught up in this thing of, you know, we start resenting. Look at what it can fall into. It says, for where you find envy. So he says, hey, if, you, here's how, if you're not sure what envy looks like, he goes, the, if, it, there's other things that spin out of that, and it roots back to envy. He says, there you find disorder and every evil practice. Every evil practice. That's a lot. Can envy cause somebody to gossip? Well, sure, right? Envy was the reason that Joseph's brothers, in the Old Testament, Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. They were hoping he was like, they'd never see him again. Maybe he'd die. They didn't care. Why? Because of envy. He had dreams. He had giftings that they resented, that they, that they had envy over. And we, we know like Cain killed Abel because he envied the gifts that he gave, that they were more acceptable to the Lord. King Saul envied David because he could write better psalms and songs. People liked them more. He's, you know, he had more pop hits on the chart. He envied him, so he tried to kill him. And then Jesus, you know, was turned over, betrayed by the Pharisees and his friend, you know, by, by Judas and, and, and ultimately crucified. They were chanting, crucify him. Why? The Bible says, out of envy. Out of envy, that's why. Number four, makes me miserable. It's 
So in the end, you know, I just, I'm just a miserable old sod when I get let envy get the best of me. If you've struggled with envy, you know this verse to be true, where it says, A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. It's what envy is to our, to our spirit and to our soul is what cancer is to our body. It just eats you up. If you went to the doctor, the doctor said, hey, you have a lump. They did a biopsy. They found out it's malignant. What's he going to want to do? Very first thing, all, out of all the other treatments, let's cut that out. Let's get that out of you. See, envy, it'll rot you from, from within. You get that out of you. you. It's not okay just to have a little bit of envy. You, wanna, you see it, you say, i got to get that out of my life. It will make me miserable. Envy makes people like that get divorced very, very miserable. I've seen lots of that over uh, within my own family system. Not, I've never been divorced, but I come from a divorced home. And then just lots of people I've talked to and counseled over the years, envy. I mean, they get divorced, and then one of the spouses gets remarried, and that, and they seem to be doing well, and they got a great job, and everybody's happy, you know, at least that's what it looks like on Instagram or whatever, you know what I mean? And they, and they, the other spouse just envies them. They just, they're miserable. All they can do is fantasize on the demise of them. And if they, oh, they, when they get their due, and they don't deserve that. And it just, it just, and it can go on for decades, decades. Now, let me just give you an example. I want you to kind of think about the person at your workplace who has your job that you wanted, all right? They, they kind of got the job you were hoping to get. And not only they have the job, but they, 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 they got a better office. They have the corner office with the window. And they got the last promotion and the one before that. And they have the night. Now they drive the nicer car. And they have the beautiful spouse. And they just won the lottery, for the second time, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about, right? We all have someone like that. And now you're driving tomorrow morning, you're on Interstate 264, and you see them. They're pulled over by the state trooper, they're getting a ticket. Now, emotional gut check. How do you feel? <laughs> Pretty good, right? Like, got them, you know? They got their due finally, you know? That's envy. And we all struggle with it. All of us. It can get us if we don't, if we, and, and it forces us off what God's doing for us. We end up being miserable. We end up getting resentful and bitter. All these things, we don't want that to happen. And so we need to be willing to say, hey, I don't want that in my life at all. Don't always be wishing for what you don't have. Good verse for parents, teach your kids. Good, par good verse for you, right? For all of us. Well, Two ways that don't work. One is don't try to change your circumstances. You see somebody with more wealth and you think, well, I'll just get wealthier. Then that, that, that'll help me. That'll take care of my envy. No, actually it won't because there's always another level. You get to that and then there's people that have more than you and you get that boat and they have the newer boat and you get this and they just on and on and on. So that doesn't work. And also you just can't force your feelings to change. Just because you want your feelings to change doesn't mean that they'll change. Feelings do what they want. Is you know, I mean, I've I've never met a feeling I trust yet. You know, I mean, they're just feelings that are all over the place. So, so we don't we don't want to stay in that. You can change your perspective though, and then the feelings will follow. How do you do that? Well, here's how you change your perspective: resist comparing myself to others. Resist comparing myself to others. Comparison is something we can all fall into. We live in a society where it's all about comparison. We go to school, we learn to compare. In athletics, we learn to compare. Every area, we, we're always comparing. And, we can fall, and when you get into comparing, next thing you know, you find yourself struggling with envy. The Bible clearly says, do not dare classify or compare ourselves what? It is not wise. That's another way of saying you're kind of dumb if you do it. Right? That's not, that's stupid. Don't do it. You get into comparison, and next thing you know, you're just going to, you know, you lose either way because if you think you're doing better than other people, that tends to cause us to be prideful. Yeah, I'm better than them. That's true. That makes me feel better. Why should that make you feel better? Or they're better than me. You know, they're doing better. Eh, now I'm discouraged. Again, you're dead either way. Dead in the water. I came across this statement the other day. It says, nothing depreciates a car faster 
than having your neighbor buy a new one. <laughs> your car was fine. All of a sudden, it's not. Why? The only thing that changed was your neighbor has one that's newer. It's nicer. One day after the resurrection, Jesus is walking with two of his disciples, Peter and John. And he's talking to them about their, what their future will look like. He gets to, the, to Peter. He's talking about what his, how he's going to die as a martyr. He says, your d- death is going to be painful. Peter's response is, well, what about John? That's his response. You know, and, and so Jesus says, and this is kind of in the ri- original Greek, he says, butt out. No, he doesn't say that. But he says, hey, that's none of your business. He goes, that's between me and John. If, John, if I want John to stay alive until I come back, and you know, that's up, that's up to me. He goes, you need to walk your walk with God. And so we need to, our tendency is to do what Peter did. Hey, what about so-and-so? And so don't compare yourself because it only causes problems in your life. Look, it says here, let everyone be sure to do his very best. For then he will have the personal satisfaction of work well done. This, that's good advice, right? Just do your best. Then it doesn't really matter about what, how somebody else performs, right? And won't need to compare himself with someone else. So we'd make sure and we do our best. What I, one of the things I like about this verse is he's saying, you know, compare, comparing and then envy by, as a result is a choice. You can choose I'm going to compare or I'm not going to compare. You can choose I'm going to fall into envy or I am not going to fall into envy. And when I find myself starting to compare with other people and falling into that, I just have to ask myself like questions of introspection. Why, Why am I doing that? What in me is making me feel like my self worth comes from how I compare myself to others? What's because that's not, that's not the way God designed us. See, we should have a different way of approaching that. We're going to look at that. Next thing is recognize my uniqueness. Here's the thing. God made you unique. And when, because you're unique, by definition, you can't compare something. I mean, something off of an assembly line and you have a template. If, if it's defective or something, you can say, oh, look, let's compare it to the, to the template. This is how it's supposed to be. That means this is inferior. But if it's a unique, if it's a Mona Lisa, there's nothing else like it, then comparisons are irrelevant, right? Because it's unique, and God has made you unique. It says, you, God, created every part of me. Every part of me, who created it? He says, God was involved in that. He says, you put me together in my mother's womb. Beautiful verse about God saying, hey, I'm intricately involved. You're specially made. You have designer genes, Right? You, you're, you're unique, and God's involved in that, and that involves your spiritual gifts, your, your, the, the, the mental horsepower that you have, your sensitivities. God uses all of that in your life, and he says that makes you special, you unique. My brother uh, goes around doing motivational and leadership talks all around the country to different organizations, and he likes to give this this uh, test called Strength Finders. You may have heard of it. Strength Finders is, helps you to figure out some of your, the, the way that your traits, your gifts, your abilities, those kinds of things. And the reason he likes that one, he was telling me, is, is because it has the results have over 7 billion results, options, 7 billion options of how, it could, it, how, how you could be. He says that's more people than there are in the world. And that's how unique you are. You're so unique that only you can do certain things. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a great thing. Okay, he goes on in that psalm. He says, you saw me before I was born. You scheduled every day of my life before I began to breathe. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't go outside of God's will. Certainly we can. Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, he said, pray, Lord, your will be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven. We pray that because sometimes it doesn't happen. We can certainly go outside of God's will. Some things happen that are not God's best for us. If I go commit suicide, that's not God's best. And so, but the Bible says in Romans that God is so good that he actually can include mistakes we make, things we, 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 we should have gone left and we went right and these kinds. And he says he can include that and that becomes, he, he makes good come out of those things. He can make good come out of things. But it doesn't mean that that was his best for us 
And it doesn't mean that was his will for us. But it is, God says, he's involved in our life. He cares about your life. And because you are made unique, and because God has a plan for your life, what that means is that you have some areas that you excel at that nobody else excels at. In other words, like on a scale from 0 to 10, there's some things you're at 10, and nobody else is at 10 in that area. You're at 10. And we, as a church that believes in life development, we come alongside you. That's part of our mission is to come alongside you, help you discover and utilize your 10 for the glory of God to make a difference in people's lives. That's what, that's what our growth track is all about. Step one, which ha- was right after the service today, great place to step in. The very first thing, uh, Sharon and I teach that together, first thing that we're going to tell you is, is, hey, God has made you unique. He has a plan for your life. You are a 10 in certain areas, and we're going to help you to figure that out, and we're going to help you to maximize that for God's kingdom. That's what we're all about. That's what we do with, with steps one through ten, step one through four. So I hope you can be part of that. But you, that's something, I mean, we can't just tell you what it is. It's a life discovery. It's something that you kind of pursue and say, okay, I'm going to try to figure out what God has for me. But if you got your, your eyes on somebody else, then that's energy that you don't have time to figure out what God wants to do in your life. Next is rejoice with what I do have. Rejoice in what I do have. Notice this verse in Ecclesiastes. It says, it is better to be satisfied with what you have than to always be wanting something else. Another good verse for if you're a parent to teach your kids this. Role model it. Teach ourselves that. Hey, I don't have to always have something else. You know, I don't need more material stuff to make myself happy. You really don't. And so often we try to buy our happiness. You know, we're in a $100,000 home. We're thinking, well, uh, people will envy me if I have a $250,000 home, or that'll make me happy. Then we get into a $250,000 home, and, and, oh, now I need a half a million dollar home. Because, you know, and, and, and motives are important. I mean, I, the material, I don't care how, how much your home costs. But why we do it? A lot of times we do it for the wrong motive. I want people to envy me. I want to be happy. And listen, uh, it shouldn't matter if people envy you. And you shouldn't be doing it because you're envying somebody else's house. And it doesn't give you happiness. You can certainly buy thrills. You can buy thrills because thrills come and go. Happiness is something that endures. That does not come from purchasing something. It really doesn't. And part of the reason is because God designed us. We like things that change. And when you buy a home, it doesn't change. It's like, oh, it's just, it's just kind of... It doesn't change. And then you want more change in your life. And so then you try to, hey, if I could just buy myself into happiness. But that is not how happiness comes. You have to realize happiness, like the things we're talking about, are really a choice. So rejoice in what I have. I have learned to be content, Paul says. Notice that word, circle that word, learned. I've learned to be content in whatever the circumstances. In other words, I don't have to wait till everything's going great for me. Because a lot of times that's what we do. Is we have good things going on, but we focus on the things that aren't going well. And we all have stuff that's not going well in our lives. We all have, we could perseverate on that and think about that. Next thing you know, we're in some, our, our head is down in the toilet. I mean, we're just thinking terrible thoughts. And we're just, we're depressed and we're discouraged. And so you, you just say, hey, I've learned. I can be content. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but today. God has given me, here's the first lesson in the school of contentment. I already have more than I deserve. Now, we don't tend to believe that, but if you do believe that, you will be way more grateful. I have more than I deserve anyways. And you have to evaluate, hey, if God's going to give me increase, if I'm going to get more resources, is it really just all about me spending it on me so that I'm in this, this, this futile pursuit of happiness? Or maybe... God is going to resource me with more than I need so that I can be a blessing to others and maybe that taps into happiness when I can help other people who are in need. It's a different way of looking at it. Certainly the world doesn't look at it like that. If they, if they give, it's like a little percent. Okay, well, I'm just, uh, this is what I give to ph- philanthropic work, you know. I've, yeah, I do philanthropy on the side. You no, know, to recognize God's going to resource me so I can be a, a channel, a funnel of blessings to other people for God's sake, for Jesus' sake. And that is how we start to figure out, hey, you know what? I'm finding real happiness there. 
Respond to others in love. Another way to address this issue of envy and comparison. The Bible says that love does not envy. And so love is the opposite of envy. Not only that, love is the antidote to envy. Because you cannot love somebody and envy them at the same time. So when you're envying somebody, when you pass by that person who's getting the ticket, you're not in a place of love. That's not it. And so whenever you do your gut check, whenever you realize you're comparing somebody and you're envying them, you're not loving. And so the Bible says you love. And love your neighbor as yourself. That is not natural. Right? Is that hard to do? Certainly. It's very difficult. And so we need to... Ask God, help me to love other people because I don't want to get caught up in comparing and envying and looking to other people because that is going to get me off base. The Bible says rejoice. Now, this is really the definition of love. See, it says rejoice with those who rejoice. When you're loving, that's what you do. Somebody else, something good happens to them, you're happy for them. They get blessed. That excites you. That's so awesome. Weep with those who weep. When somebody else is going through a difficult time, you weep with them. Now, envy is the opposite, right? Something good happens to them, you're weeping. Uh -huh. Them again. I can't believe it. Something good happens to them, you're rejoicing. I mean, bad happens to them, you're rejoicing. So we don't want to fall into that. Certainly we want to say, you know what? I want to take the high road. I don't want that to cause me to lose my focus which is why we talked about some of the negative things of envy right out of the gates. We said, hey, here's the things that it'll do to us. Make us miserable, cause us resentment, keep us from God's will in our life. Now, I have this, this, this um, concept called the, the law of the pie. I thought it was like a thing, but I looked it up on Google this week, and I didn't see it. So maybe it is a thing, but, but the law of the pie, in other words, is that some people view life as like it's a pie, and there's only, only so many slices. And so if you get a slice, I think to myself, oh, no, I'm going to go hungry. You know, I'm not, that's a piece I don't get now. And they look at life as like, you know, it's a pie. And so they can't rejoice when other people, something good comes to them. When they get a piece of pie, when they get something good, they, they can't rejoice because they, their, their perspective is, oh, no, God's going to run out of blessings. You know, I, there's not enough for me. And this stuff really roots back to really childhood, going all the way back. And there's lots of different reasons. One reason is that some, 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 some of you were raised in a, in a home where favoritism was, was, was predominant. And one of the parents favored one kid over the other. And maybe you're the kid who wasn't favored. And so you had to work extra hard to get love. You had to work extra hard to get noticed. And so now you're an adult and you're at work and you're doing the same thing. You're still living that, 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 that law of the pie out, where I have to work extra hard to get noticed. And if somebody else gets a shout out, somebody else gets a praise, they get a promotion, they get uh, some kind of recognition, it just, it hurts you. You can't rejoice with that. Why? Because that's, there's just not enough to go around. And there's some people that in the workplace, they, they have to have all of the attention, the focus, and the love on themselves. And the minute somebody else gives it to somewhere else, they, they get upset. And so some bosses, some managers, they start to get skittish. They think, well, I'm just not going to do it for anybody because so-and-so always gets upset. Listen, if that's you, that's their problem. If you're a manager, you're a boss, you don't punish everybody just because somebody's got some dysfunction they haven't resolved. You continue to do shout-outs and you do recognition. And if it comes their way, then it comes their way. But they're going to always want the focus on them, and it's not supposed to be like that. So you, and th that might be you. And if you're that way, you just got to say, God, help me to be freed from that. Because that's a bondage where you can't rejoice when other people, uh, good things happen to them. Lastly, refocus on pleasing God. Refocus on pleasing God. This is really the answer because what do you do when you have uh, a low self-esteem? Because low self-esteem is the root of comparison. I've got to feel better about myself based on what I think other people are doing. That's, an, that's inferiority when I feel bad about myself. Well, the way to resolve that is, is to go to God. God loves you and has a purpose for your life. He has, he's designed you special and, 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 and he has some great things. He says, you're worthy. You're lovable. You, and he gave his life for you. You have enormous value. How do you know what something is worth? Well, it's real simple. What somebody's willing to pay for. 
That's that at any auction, what, that's the value. They go, well, I don't know what it's going to take, but whatever somebody's willing to pay for, that's its value. And God says, you're so valuable, I'll send my son to die for you. You are that, you're worth that much to God. So you have incredible worth. So it's worthless to compare yourself to other people to try to fill that, that, that love tank. You go to God for that. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. You set your mind on things above. In other words, try to get God's perspective. You know, there's a bird's eye view. Well, there's something bigger than the bird's eye view, and it's God's eye view. In other words, look at it from eternity perspective, and you go, hey, is, is going up the success ladder going to matter in eternity? And you'll start to realize it kind of like takes the whole fire out of that. There's No, it doesn't. So start getting God's, what will really matter? What's going to really last? What's going to really last? And I'll tell you what is going to last is his people last. God created people to last forever. That's why he, he, we're eternal beings. We're, we're, there's, an, there's something in us that knows it, that we're not just an animal, that we, that we know that there's something in us that lasts beyond that. We think about it. We dwell on it. We know that. People write about it. And so God created you for eternity. So you need to be thinking like a spirit being. Hey, I have, I've got to be planning for something big. And, I, and, and God's got a mission for me. And I'm going to miss it if I start comparing myself to others. He says, don't be envious of sinful people. Let reverence for the Lord be the concern of your life. If it is, you have a bright future. God says, I want you to have a bright future. I want you to have a hopeful demeanor. You're going into, the, into life knowing that there's a lot of pie left. God does not run out of pie blessings. He has more and more to give you. The, the problem is often we're our worst own enemy. We're the one, we get sidetracked, we get tunnel vision, we start just thinking about what we don't have, what other people's have, we get resentful, we become miserable, and we get lost. And so we have to just, we have to just pray in a humble way, God, help me not to get lost. Here's my closing prayer, and it's a prayer about that. Lord, don't let me make a mess of things. Now, I'm just letting you in on my own prayer life. This is one of my top prayers, because I, I, I do a great job at making a mess. In fact, if you want to pray for me, you can pray this. Lord, Andy's always making a mess of things. You know, help him out. And, and you think I'm kidding? I do. I make, I, I make a mess all the time. And some of you are in that same place where you're saying, you know what, I just make a mess of things. And so just tell me what to do, God, and I'll do it. Have that willing spirit, that sensitive spirit. God, it's not, it's not an attitude. It's just I don't know. But once I know, I'm there. I'm going to do it. I'll take a risk. I'll make the sacrifice. And then lastly, turn me away from wanting any other plan than yours. To have that kind of resolve. Say, you know what, I've tried my plan. That's not all that good. Other people have a plan for me. That's not even good either. There's one plan, one plan only. All the way that started from when you were being knitted by God in your mother's womb. And that's God's plan. He has a plan. You're unique. So it doesn't help to compare. And so you God, help me not to make a mess of things. Just show me and I'll do it. Show me what you want me to do and I'll do it. And then help me to want your plan more than anything. That is an honorable prayer. That's the prayer I want for us today. Would you bow your heads and let's pray. Let me just ask you, just where you're sitting, just kind of just between you and you and you and God, how are you doing with envy? I mean, for most of us, it's a blind spot, which is why we have to talk about it. You know, and, and then I gave you some examples, and maybe when through some of those examples, you said, well, maybe that's me a little, or maybe it's a little more than a little. And just to be honest, Say, God, help me to root that out. Maybe you need to ask that question. Why? What in me is trying to set my worth based on what other people do? That's a fair question. Why not ask yourself that? What's in there? If you can't see, then ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, reveal that to me. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to be able to see what's really going on. You say, God, I'm tired of being miserable. I'm tired of having pity parties, of 
having my eyes off of what you have for me onto other people. Say, Lord, thank you that it's a choice. I get to choose whether I compare. And some of you need to just kind of in the school of contentment where you just say, God, help me, to, help me to realize I really do have more than I deserve. The, the Lord, you, you want to bless me not just so I can try to go the world's way and buy happiness, but because you've, I'm a tool to be used to bless other people. Would you say, God, help me to discover my 10? Help me to, would you, would you pray for the church? Say, God, help Vineyard Community Church in their life development plan to help others to discover what they're best at and to use it to make a difference for eternity. And when you pray that prayer, it might include you. Say, God, I want to take step one. I'm ready to, to take that next step. I'm ready to get involved in a small group. That's, maybe that's your next step. Where some, I can be, have some friends that can pray for me and encourage me. This is not all done alone. People I let speak into my life. If you've never prayed to receive Christ, then I'm going to pray with you right now. Would you just do that right where you're at, just with your eyes closed, and just whisper this to God. Say, God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for me. Would you do that? Thank you for showing me how valuable I am to you. Help me to root my worth in that and not what I see on Instagram or on Facebook or anything else. You say, and just close with this prayer. Say, Lord, help me to not make a mess of things. Show me what to do and I'll do it. And then say, God, help me to do your plan that you have for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.